Torah TV. The world is thinking. The United States is really passionate about legislating morality, I think. And in Europe, they've realized that that's folly, that's futile. My European friends tell me a society has to make a choice, tolerate alternative lifestyles or build more prisons. And then they always remind me we lead the world in incarceration. We lock up eight times as many people per capita as Europeans do, and either we're just inherently more criminal or something screwy in our society. Europe doesn't need to lock so many people up. Why is that? Well, it's worth thinking about. Prostitution, nobody would say prostitution is a good thing, but some people might say it'd be more pragmatic from a harm reduction point of view to legalize it. Let prostitutes be unionized, don't give them a license unless they're clean and checked by a nurse every month so they're not spreading diseases, and let them, as they do here in the Netherlands, when they have problems, they push their emergency button, and a pimp doesn't come to their rescue, but a policeman does. It's just a different approach to things. It's a tough sell in America, but they like it. When you travel around Europe, you find soft drugs and hard drugs are a problem. And so are they in our society. We can learn from Europe in this regard. I was in Zurich, went into a coffee shop, went down into the basement, opened the door, blue lights. Blue lights in the toilet, in the coffee shop. What's going on? I couldn't see my veins. I couldn't shoot up if I wanted to. Really frustrating if you're a junkie in need of a fix. Because they don't want their junkies in their toilet shooting up. It's logical. You cross the street and you see a machine that used to sell cigarettes that's been retooled and now it sells government subsidized syringes. Nobody's passing around needles over there. Here we don't want to give needles out because they might use them, you know. Well, they're going to use them. Let's give them syringes that won't pass diseases around. It's harm reduction. A society has to have a drug policy. You can measure it in terms of incarceration like we do or you can measure its effectiveness in terms of harm reduction. In Europe, they're more inclined to take the crime out of it and treat it like a medical problem. They're pragmatic. Here we have this just say no moralism about it, and it is not working. I've been speaking out on this quite a lot lately because it's hard for people to speak out on it. I can and I can get away with it. From this uh, needle machine here, the heroin addict would go down the street to a cafe fix. It's a heroin maintenance clinic. And I've seen them. They're ugly. They're all these wasted, emaciated needle addicts. They're getting medical care. They're getting counseling. They're getting their lives back on track. And they're getting help. A lot of naive tourists go to Europe and they see all these junkies on the street. What's going on, these liberal Europeans? Well, their junkies are not in jail and they're not dead. That's the difference. They're on the street. They're in their face. They're working with them. We lost 18,000 people to heroin overdoses last year. Europe lost 8,000. There's a difference in our approach to drugs. There's serious issues going now, and of course there's the approach to soft drugs. I'm fascinated by, you know, marijuana being classified as a soft and regulated drug like alcohol or a hard drug like needle drugs and so on. In Europe, a joint is about as exciting as a can of beer. In the Netherlands, it's been 25 years since they arrested anybody for marijuana, and use has not gone up. And there's no indication that marijuana is a gateway drug. In fact, the hard drug using population is aging in the Netherlands, you see. It's a fascinating thing, it's way beyond the scope of this class today, but the, uh, we're learning now in the United States that we have a prohibition going on right now when it comes to marijuana, which is about as smart as the prohibition against alcohol was in the 20s and 30s. When courageous people finally stood up and said, you know, this drug is bad, alcohol abuse is horrible, but the law against it is causing more problems than the drug itself. Let's find a smarter way to deal with this problem and regulate it and educate people. It took courageous people to do that back in the 30s. And nobody was saying booze is good. They're saying the law is causing more problems than the drug. People are going to smoke marijuana. In the United States, we smoke twice the marijuana per capita as Europeans do. And use does not go up. There's not a reservoir of people just wishing they could ruin their lives with drugs if only it was legal. <laughs> so I've been having a lot of fun talking about this. And I can talk about it, as I mentioned, because uh, nobody can fire me and I don't need to get elected. And, uh, <laughs> And some people say they're going to boycott me when they hear about my policies on American drug policy and so on. And I just think they're not going to use my, take my tours or use my books and that sort of thing. And I just think Europe's going to be more fun without you. Uh, <laughs> so, but uh, uh, today in our country, we have 80,000 people in jail for marijuana. Last year, we arrested more people than ever before on marijuana charges, 800,000 people. It's a waste of money. It's, ruined, it's messing up a lot of families and it is counterproductive. 
Nobody's saying drugs are good. Nobody's saying kids should have access to it. Nobody's saying you should lighten up on people drinking when they're intoxicated or anything. You're just saying maybe it's smarter to treat marijuana as a civil liberty for adult recreational mature use. And that's the, it's not across the board in Europe, but that seems to be a more pragmatic solution. And I think.